Hi, my name's Phil. I like talking about politics and in this video I'd like to discuss some of the recent polls and events which will be extremely bad news for Rishi Sunak personally, but also very bad news for Conservative MPs who want their party to just pull together for the next election. On the strength of the evidence here, this is not going to occur. But first, if you'd like to be notified of daily news and politics, please subscribe to the channel and click the bell notification icon. So in order to go through to a preferred general election date in 2024, preferred by the Tories that is, with a decent chance of at least severely limiting the scale of Conservative losses, Rishi Sunak needs to be able to beat off the challenge from Boris Johnson. There is no credible way of Rishi Sunak giving his party much confidence that he can turn their fortunes around and have a good chance of winning. He just needs to make sure there's nobody else left to replace him with. The only serious challenger is Boris Johnson. Boris Johnson has recently been seen swanning around here and there, pretending he's still the Prime Minister. Popping up in Kiev for the surprise visit with President Zelensky, that was a particular eye-opener. How did he get there? I mean, in theory, if he didn't mind a change of connection, there are flights, not directly from here, but there are flights, but he would still have needed some clearance. There are big warnings over them all saying, uh, make sure you, you're quite sure you want to go there. In what capacity was he visiting? In what capacity has he been carrying out all these international engagements when he's supposed to be working as an MP? And what has it been costing the public? It's not just an ego trip for Johnson either. It's a deliberate campaign to undermine Sunak. Because who's representing the UK at, at these international events? On the world stage, who's representing the UK? Boris Johnson, sometimes Keir Starmer, never Rishi Sunak. He was shamed into attending the last COP meeting. Even then he didn't want to go. But that has been it. All other international events, they've had Boris Johnson there. You know, they haven't had Rishi Sunak. He's not even attempting to force his presence on the world stage. People around the world may still reasonably assume that Boris Johnson's still the Prime Minister. Sunak is focusing, is focusing on his day-to-day -day firefighting in South Downing Street, completely ignoring everything else. But despite Johnson causing trouble, Sunak should still be safe enough if it can be demonstrated to his, to his MPs that he is at least better than Johnson in the role. In fact, actually, he just has to appear no worse, really. Because it would be a hugely destructive move to replace yet another Tory leader before the election. And even many Johnson supporters are reported to appreciate that when I see comments to, to correspondents. But it would be especially damaging to get rid of Sunak only to go back to Johnson. The public view of that would be something to see. We would have gone through, remember all the government paralysis we had last summer when people were worried about energy bills, but the government was like powerless to do anything apparently. All the pain of the Trussonomics bombshell, which has made the cost of living much worse. Interest rates gone up half a percent again this week. Gone through all the rigmarole of getting rid of her and putting Sunak in. All the confusion of hearing that, that Johnson had enough nominations at the last leadership contest, so he could have been Prime Minister now, but he pulled out. All of that mess. All of that faff. And for the Tories to risk alienating the public even more by going, do you know what, we're going to get rid of another leader and put the original one back in place. For that to happen, those Tory MPs would have to be absolutely certain that it would be a net benefit to their election chances. It just doesn't seem credible. However, polls like the ones that have been coming out in the last few weeks are not going to help Sunak's course. YouGov brought a series of polls out. So there, there was one a couple of weeks ago, which shows that not only has Sunak's favourability rating dropped significantly since taking office, not only is it significantly below that of Keir Starmer, but Conservative voters themselves are turning against him. Like often when you see polls about how people perceive various political leaders, it's, it's the general public or at least the voting public, which is a little bit better, but it, it still doesn't mean a great deal. Rishi Sunak could be the most hated politician in the UK amongst people who don't vote Tory anyway. Makes not one blind bit of difference to his election chances. How is he perceived to those who voted Conservative at the last election? The answer is not really well enough. You can look at the latest polls and say, well, 
51% of Conservative voters have a favourable view of him. But if the Tories only win 51% of the votes they got the last election, they're wiped out, they're gone. Fortunately, the Tories can rely upon many Conservative voters voting for the party, even if they don't have a favourable view of the leader as their preferred choice in the election. I mean, I've done that. There'll be plenty of others that have done that. It's not always just about the leader. The problem is that Sunak's favourability rating has dropped quite a lot amongst Conservative voters in such a short time. He had a net favourability amongst Conservative voters of plus 29 at the end of October when he became Prime Minister. Now it's just plus 10. That is a hell of a drop. And then you think to yourself, but there's still worse times to come this year. It's not like we're at the, the trough and things are going to get better over this year. They're not. They're still going to get worse. So then you wonder, so what? So if this trend continues to go downwards, what if it's negative by the time of the local elections in May? His opponents will have another powerful stick to beat him with at just the time when they expect to make a move, I think. You know, another even more recent set of polls, this was yesterday, says that Sunak is not considered any more likely to win back wavering 2019 Tory voters than Boris Johnson. Now, he needed to win that one. He really needed to show that he could win back voters that had turned against Johnson. Because if he can't do that, Johnson's allies will scent blood. There's no getting away from it. The polls look very bad for Sunak and the Tories. And worst of all, they're on a downward trend. When he became prime minister, his own approval rating was actually fairly decent, all things considered. But that of the Tories was shot to pieces. He did initially rescue the Tories polling after Liz Truss, but suffered with his own. But the thing is, both are now back on a downward trajectory. And unless they level out very soon, the vultures will be circling. And even then, they'd still have to go up at some point because their current position, even if it was maintained, is woeful. So what is Sunak doing to try and reverse the, his party's fortunes in the polls? He has two main legislative pushes right now. There's various things going on. You know, there's the Northern Ireland Protocol stuff, but that's a legacy issue from Boris Johnson. There's the retained EU law bill. That's a legacy issue from Boris Johnson. In terms of what's his legislation, what's his agenda? He's got two big bills. The first is the anti-strike legislation that he's trying to get through Parliament. Even Jacob Rees-Mogg said that although he'll support it, he doesn't think it's going to survive the legal challenges. Now, Rees-Mogg is an opponent of Sunak, fair enough. But his point stands, if the legislation succeeds, from my point of view, it's no guarantee it'll win over voters. After all, the bill is designed to remove the rights from those voters. <laughs> it's quite a lot of people in those unions that voted Tory in 2019 in the Red Wall, I will tell you. But the thing is, if it doesn't succeed, Sunak will just look incompetent, ineffective at least. His second... She's just been announced now, is what he himself is calling the Stop the Boats Bill. The Stop the Boats Bill. Another bit of red meat to the gammons. This one is likely to face even more robust legal challenges than the anti-strike bill. And why is he doing this? Neither bill addresses the main priorities for voters right now, which is the state of our public services, especially the NHS, and the cost of living crisis. If he tries boasting when inflation is half the figure it was last year, he's not going to get a mighty cheer from the public because they will be asking him, so why is it even harder for me to pay the bills this year than it was last year then? If you're doing such a good job of the economy that you think it's worth crowing over, why is my cost of living crisis worse than it was last year when everyone accepted it was rubbish? The reason Sunak is pushing these strike and boats bills is not because they'll win over voters, but because it's the only thing he can think of which actually unites his MPs. He's trying to rally his MPs around, uh, you know, causes that they all agree with in order to avoid giving them any excuse to move against him when Johnson's posse turn up at high noon for their showdown later this year. Because voters can't kick him out until the end of 2024. But Tory MPs can kick him out next week. You know, these bills are not going to help him win the next election. I see no evidence that they will even help him limit the damage. Although I accept that ev absence of evidence is not evidence of absence. But I can guarantee that this is not the best use of his parliamentary resources if he actually wanted to win back 2019 Tory voters. It's not going to win back enough of them. There are more effective policies he could pursue 
but they would divide his MPs. He is expending all of his energy into avoiding doing that. But by doing what he can do to survive until the end of the week, the end of the year, he is increasing his chances of political oblivion for himself and his party next year. Because I can look at these polls, I can look at polls like this, which show that the situation's worse now than it was under Boris Johnson. And I can know, yeah, a lot of that is down to events which were already set in motion. In other words, the polls were already worsening under Boris Johnson and they would have continued to worsen as the cost of living and public sector pay issues became more problematic for the government. Plus, you'd have had all Boris Johnson's scandals heaped onto it as well. But as far as Johnson's supporters are concerned, the polls as they were last summer are set in stone. As far as they're concerned, no, 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 that's what you get with Boris Johnson. They will compare those with Sunak's worse and worsening polls and hold it up as proof, well, it'd be much better with Boris Johnson because this is what it was like with Boris Johnson. Even if most Tory MPs aren't persuaded of this, and who knows if they will or won't be, it'll just make Johnson loyalists louder and louder, preventing any serious unity for Sunak to work with. And these brainless bills that he's pushing are all about trying to achieve this unity. It's a right mess for him, a right mess for the Tories, and should hopefully be the end of them for some considerable time after the election. But there we are. Those are my thoughts. Let me know yours in the comments below. I hope you found the video interesting. If you did, please click the like button. And if you'd like to support the channel further, the join button for memberships. And until next time, I'll see you later.